Welcome back to this series on creating a mapping web app. In the last video, I showed this page, displaying connections between airports, with the width of the line being the number of unique flights between them. This data is derived from our flight data. It's not explicitly in our database. There's usually a prototyping phase between an idea and the execution, so I'd like to briefly cover how to prototype using the existing models we've created for our Flask app. So if we hop over to Jupyter, we can actually do our prototyping in Jupyter using our app data. So from our app, we can import a few things. We can import the create app function that actually creates the application and that database object. We also import the models that we created. So we can call the create app function to create an instance of our app. Um, and then we can actually query the database just using this app object. Um, and we have to create a context for this uh, so that it's act acting inside of our app context. So unfortunately, every time we want to query the database, we have to wrap it in this with statement. So if we define an airport that we're looking for. Just like we were querying our database in the app itself, we can use the model here. So we can start to pull the data that we're looking for out of our database um, using a more complicated query. We want to start with our flights data, and we want to aggregate on the origin airport and the destination airport. So we have to start with the same app context. And I'll have a results object. And if you just query our flights directly, it can really only return flights objects, which is not what we want. So we can use this with entities, which will give us tuples of results. We want the origin airport, the destination airport, and this is going to get long, so I'm going to wrap between lines. And we can use the count function, which is an aggregating function, to get the distinct values of the flight numbers. All right, so in order to use an aggregating function, we're going to need to use a group by. We want to group on these two columns. And then to have it execute the query, we give it a dot all. And before we run this, we do need to import those functions uh, from SQL Alchemy. And so these queries do take a little bit of time. All right, so that probably took 30 to 45 seconds. We just look at the first maybe 10 of these. We've got the two airports and the count. Um, so we'll want to filter out any null values, and we can filter out any zero values as well. So before the group by, we can add a filter. Do want to get any airport that is not none on both sides? So we can do two filter statements. And we can do a filter on the count using a dot having. We're basically copying 
this part right here. We want this to be greater than zero. All right, so that took another 30 or 45 seconds, but now if we look at our results, uh, they're all greater than zero and there's no null values. Uh, so we can turn this into a pandas data frame. Now we've got our origin, our destination, and our account. Um, but realistically, because we want the strength of the connection between airports, it's reasonable to think that there could be another row in here that's got AFW on the origin side and ABE on the um, destination side. So we can, instead of using origin and destination, uh, sort these columns alphabetically and just, just sum them. So for that, we can import NumPy. And then create two new columns. And just to show why we did this, we can sort on these new columns. We've got two rows with AB on one side and AFW on the other side, just the inverse of origin and destination. Um, so now we can group and sum this count column. All right, so now we've got a data frame with the two airport codes and summed up between them. So now we've got the strength of the line, but we actually need the coordinate for each of these airports. So we can go back to our database. So we've got 4,600 airports in our database. Um, we can create a dictionary between the code and its geometry so that we can add it to this data frame. And we'll use a dictionary comprehension here just to keep it in one line. All right, so we can use the mapping function in pandas to add this to our data frame. So create a new column for its coordinate. And we'll do this twice, once for the second airport code. Right, so this is, I believe it's a binary text string um, for the airport code. So we'll have to convert that to something usable uh, in a minute, but we're not quite there yet. All right, so we need to filter out any null airport values. Um, it's possible that we had an airport code that we didn't have a coordinate for, so um, we can just filter those out.
It's just like we built out a hundred rows. So it looks like we filtered out maybe about a hundred rows. All right, so we've got the individual coordinates and we want to add some line strings for them. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of quick imports because we need to be able to convert that um, that binary into a shape, which Gealchemy has a function for. And then we need to be able to create a line string with Shapely. All right, so I'm going to make a function that takes in one row and creates a line string from it. Um, it's a pretty straightforward function, so we could probably do it in line, but it's a little easier to read if we do it in here. So we're going to create a list where we push each of the coordinates into a shape, which will be a point. And we can create a new geometry column. Right, so we can probably drop these two coordinate columns. Um, but first we can create this, uh, turn this into a pandas geo data frame. Asset our data frame, give it the geometry column and our projection. All right, so now we've got our line string, our strength, and our two airport codes. And finally, we can just quickly visualize this. And so the way that we visualize it on the actual web page will be a little bit different. So let's filter out everything that's got greater than uh, n connections between them. We'll color it based on the count. So we have the strength of the connections as colors rather than as line widths. But I think we've successfully prototyped the steps going from having a just a flights table to the connections between these airports. Because this is the prototyping phase, we're allowed a runtime that would be completely unacceptable to a front-end experience. To run this whole notebook probably takes one to two minutes, and no user is going to wait for that. If we go back to our page and reload it, it takes maybe one to two seconds to load. Because the majority of the runtime is the queries themselves, we can do things like turn them into a materialized view that we can query directly. And then so that data doesn't get stale, we can refresh that view asynchronously on whatever cadence we find acceptable. Hopefully this video has helped put into context how we could go from an idea to a functional prototype that we can then migrate into a functioning page. In the next video, we'll take what we did here and actually build the page. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to comment below. There are links to the code and some sample data in the description. Hope to see you in the next one.